Derek Rose, John Wall, OJ Mayo, Brandon Jennings, Kyrie Irving, Josh Selby, Thon Maker, DeMar DeRozan, Ben Simmons, and Dennis Smith Jr. What do all of these players have in common? They were, at one point in their basketball careers, considered mixtape legends. During their high school years, these 10 players would pack gyms and were so good that you could often find celebrities or NBA players in attendance for their games. And because of their not only dominant but flashy and jaw-dropping style of play, all 10 of these players racked up serious views on YouTube, again making them mixtape legends. The thing is though, while at one point all 10 of these guys were some of the most hyped up players we have ever seen, 5 of them would find serious NBA success while 5 of them would fail. And so let's start this video off with Josh Selby, a name that is not very well known among the newer generation of NBA fans, but it was just 12 years ago when Selby was was neck and neck with Kyrie Irving in the race for the top high school point guard in the entire country. In fact, Rivals.com even ranks Selby as the top player in the nation, and based on this high school footage that you are currently watching, you can see why. Selby was very, very athletic. The man was a force on the basketball court, and many people thought he had unlimited upside. To go even further here, crazily, Selby's talent level was so intense that at the time, an Indiana Hoosiers fan wrote on Facebook that he would slap his own mother to have have Josh Selby join the Hoosiers. That is extreme and horrible. So moving away from that statement, let's now head to Selby's time at the University of Kansas, where Josh Selby came out with a bang. Because in his first game for the Jayhawks, Josh scored a team high 21 points that included a go-ahead three-pointer with just 26 seconds left in a two-point win over USC. This debut was called the most hyped-up debut for a Kansas freshman since Danny Manning, something that was very impressive as Danny Manning became college basketball player of the year and led the Jayhawks to a national championship in 1988. Because of this, Kansas fans were very, very excited for the rest of this season, but this would really be the last time Josh Selby would live up to the hype in his entire basketball career. Because after spending the rest of this season dealing with injuries, Josh would finish the year averaging just 7.9 points per game and shot under 40% from the field. Despite this though, Josh did make the decision to leave for the NBA, and it's here that it's apparent that he is the biggest bust of all of the players on this list. Because after being a consensus top three recruit in the nation, just one year later, Josh Selby was only a second round selection by the Memphis Grizzlies. And with the Grizzlies in two seasons, Josh would play in just 38 games total and average 2.2 points per game in those games. Because of this, it's no surprise that he was out of the NBA after those two seasons. And to show you just how much of a fall from grace this was, looking at this chart, here are the other top ranked high school prospects in the class of 2010 that made the NBA. On this list, of course, guys like Kyrie Irving outplayed Josh, but even guys like Alan Kraft have had a much better career. And to go even further here, this chart takes a look at players that made the NBA that were out of the top 150 ranked recruits in Josh Selby's high school class. And as you can see, guys like TJ McConnell and Tony Snell had a much, much better careers than Josh Selby. And so wrapping this up, Josh would end up playing in China, Croatia, Israel, Turkey, and Korea. And although he was an all-star in Israel during the 2015 and 2017 seasons, he has not played professional basketball in two years, making in my my opinion, Josh Selby, a man who was once a top three ranked player in his class, one of the biggest what if basketball players in recent memory. But now moving on, we have Dennis Smith Jr., one of the greatest high school mixtape players of all time. Because as you can see here, Dennis was dominant against future NBA players in high school, and due to his incredible athleticism, was once a five star prospect who put up highlight after highlight. Seriously, whenever Dennis Smith Jr. took the court, he was a can't miss show until he tore his. ACL, which caused him to miss his entire senior season. And of course, tearing your ACL is an injury that would set many players back significantly, but Dennis Smith Jr. was dunking just two weeks after he tore his ACL. And the reason for this might help to prove why Smith Jr. was an electrifying dunking machine. Because when doctors went to go in for surgery on Dennis's ACL, they found out that he had an extra ligament in his knee. Yes, the man is literally somewhat of a mutant. He has more ligaments than the average person, and because of this, 
Dennis was able to bounce back quickly and dominate at NC State. Because at NC State, Dennis Smith Jr. was named the ACC Rookie of the Year after averaging 18.1 points, 4.6 rebounds, 6.2 assists, 1.9 steals, and he finished with a 23.1 PER. And as you can see, when compared to De'Aaron Fox, a member of Dennis's draft class, Dennis outperformed Fox in every major category. Because of this, scouts three years ago thought Dennis was a very high upside prospect. Just listen to what these guys had to say. One scout said, quote, I had Smith number two on my board. That team was a complete mess last year. I think he's going to be pretty damn good. Another scout said, reminds me of Steve Francis and Baron Davis. If he stays healthy, he will be special. And a third one said, I think Smith could be one of the top point guards in the league, maybe even an all-star. And at first it looked like these scouts were right because although Dallas did struggle in 2017, Smith Jr. did look promising with averages of 15.2 points, 5.2 assists, and 3.8 rebounds a game. This was a promising rookie season, but then enter Luka Doncic. Luka is of course a player who thrives with the ball in his hands, and Luka is also a generational talent. Unfortunately for Dennis Smith Jr., he wanted the ball in his hands as well, but was just not as good as Luka, and so the two players' play styles just did not mesh. This led to Dennis Smith Jr. wanting out of the Dallas Mavericks, and the perfect situation for that came in February of 2019, when the Mavericks were able to trade Dennis Smith Jr. over to the Knicks for Kristaps Porzingis, a stunning trade that left even Mark Cuban shocked. As he stated at the time, it happens in the NBA, it's like the James Harden trade. Harden gets traded from OKC to the Rockets, and I'm like, damn, why didn't we even get that offer to us? We weren't in the mix. Nobody was. It was one phone call and the Rockets said yes. The Porzingis trade was our one phone call. So as you can see, the Mavericks had no problem with trading Dennis, and since that trade, Smith Jr.'s career has gone downhill. As during the 2020 season, Dennis Smith Jr. would average just 5.5 points per game while shooting under 35% from the field. So yes, he is a young player. Yes, he still has a chance to bounce back, but at this moment, it looks like Dennis Smith Jr. is a certified bust. And speaking of players who are young but look like busts, let's continue on to Thon Maker. And all right, guys, let's just get this out of the way right now. At one point, I made a video saying that Thon Maker said he had MVP potential. I never said he had it. I was just quoting what Thon said himself. However, I will accept some heat for that video because I did hype the man up. With that said, let's keep this in mind. Kevin Garnett in 2017 said, and I quote, Thon is going to be the MVP of the league one day. Mark it down. He has the bones. He has the appetite to be able to chase something like that. So if I'm going to be wrong about Thon, at least me and Kevin Garnett are going down together. And I mean, this was once a guy who was stated by well-renowned scouts to have, quote, superstar written all over him. This was after you could see in these mixtapes, people began to say that Thon was potentially a taller version of Kevin Durant. As you could see, it looked like Thon's shooting ability was incredible, and it also looked like he was able to take people off the dribble. It looked like he was an incredible dunker. Basically, it looked like Thon was playing on a nine foot rim, which maybe he was. The reason I say this is that it was highlights like this, and it was Thon's supposed incredible potential that led to him being the number 10 pick in the 2016 draft. It was at that time that many people in the Bucks organization compared him to Giannis and said that one day he was going to be a great player. That of course never happened. As in three seasons with Milwaukee, Thon never averaged over five points per game. And then of course the Bucks gave up on Thon and traded him to the Pistons. And with the Pistons, Thon has continued to be underwhelming. In the 2020 season, he averaged just 4.7 points and 2.8 rebounds, meaning that at this point, it looks like Thon is a certified bust. This next player though, at one point did not seem like a bust at all. Because while LeBron James is by far the most exciting high school player we've seen in recent memory, the man who was crowned as the next player to set the high school world on fire in the 2000s was OJ Mayo. Mayo would play varsity basketball when he was just in seventh grade, and by the time he was a senior, he was a scoring machine. And because of his unreal athleticism, seemingly knockdown jump shot, and just overall dominance, the OJ Mayo hype show jumped into full force. At one point in high school, OJ was in Sports Illustrated, and the hype even grew so big that players such as LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony came to watch OJ play high school games. This of course made Mayo a national name, and by the time ESPN released their final high school basketball rankings, they had placed Mayo over the future youngest MVP in NBA history, Derrick Rose. The thing is though, OJ would continue to dominate in college as he averaged nearly 21 points per game in his only season at USC while making the all Pac-12 team and was named a finalist for the Wooden Award. From there, he was the third pick of the 2008 draft, one spot ahead of Russell Westbrook, another player who would go on to win the MVP. Again though, at the time it was 
Mayo, who was viewed as the more well-rounded overall prospect as during his rookie season for the Memphis Grizzlies, OJ would average nearly 20 points per game and finish second in the Rookie of the Year voting behind Derrick Rose. And to show just how dominant OJ was, since the 2000 season, here are the only rookie guards to average at least 18 points per game in their first year. As you can see on this list, other than Tyreek Evans, every single one of these players was a future all-star and there were only eight players on this list in total. However, by Mayo's third season, he would regress to the point where his point per game average would fall to just 11.3 and by comparison, there have been 122 third year guards to average at least 11 points per game in their third season in NBA history. A massive, massive drop off. After that third season, Mayo would be a role player for the rest of his NBA career and then in the 2016 offseason, OJ was a free agent when it was announced that he was suspended from the NBA for two years for violating the NBA's drug policy. This was not actually a surprise as there were always rumors surrounding OJ and drugs at the time and these days you can find OJ Mayo playing in Taiwan, something that seems ridiculous considering the hype he once had. And it is at this point in the video guys where we are going to finish off with Brandon Jennings, a man who once scored 55 points in just his seventh NBA game, something that seemed unbelievable at the time. And because of this, Brandon Jennings once had the world at his fingertips, but now he's out of the NBA entirely, something nobody would have guessed 10 years ago. And to put this in perspective for you, there have only been nine rookies in NBA history to ever score 50 points in a single game, and here is how the rest of those players' careers ended up. As you could see on this list, every single player other than Brandon Jennings is an NBA Hall of Famer. This right here is a perfect example of why Brandon Jennings' career became so disappointing, and looking back at high school, it is not a stretch to say that Jennings was one of the most electrifying high school prospects in recent memory. As you can see in his mixtapes, Jennings would leave fans in awe with his incredible speed, shifty play, and ability to make difficult shot after difficult shot. It is clear, Brandon Jennings was a walking bucket in high school. At any moment in any game, Jennings had the chance to embarrass his opponents, and while as a high school player, Jennings was flashy, he was also incredibly dominant. During his senior season in 2008, Brandon would average 35.5 points per game at the top basketball program in the entire country, Oak Hill Academy. Because of this, by the time his senior season was over, Brandon Jennings was named the number one prospect in America, according to ESPN. He would then end up becoming the first major prospect to sign overseas instead of going to college, which is a very big deal as of now, because in retrospect, we have seen players such as LaMelo Ball go overseas instead of playing college, and now things have gone even further as we have players such as Jalen Green joining the G League. Moving on from that, Brandon Jennings did eventually become a lottery pick and would make the All-NBA Rookie First Team in 2010. However, like I said before, Brandon Jennings was a flashy high school player, and in high school, while that did work, in the NBA, it definitely affected his efficiency. Because while Brandon did end up averaging 19 points in his third season, Jennings would end up playing four seasons for the Milwaukee Bucks, and in those four seasons, he shot under 40% in three of them. From there, eventually Brandon became a Detroit Piston, and it was there that he tore his Achilles. Because of this injury, Jennings was never the same again, and by the time he turned 28, he was out of the league forever. Making this a very disappointing end for a player who shocked the world by scoring 55 points in just his third game. And there we have it, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. It helps out a ton. And if you're new to this channel, the NBA is about to be back. That means the grind is about to be real. So make sure you subscribe and turn post notifications on so you don't miss an upload. Also, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day, guys, and cue that music. By the way, if you're still here while the music is queued, here are two videos I think you are going to love watching. All you have to do is just click on either one of them on the screen right here. And other than that, guys, again, have a great day and peace.